Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, for you, for those of you who do not know me, <laughs> my name is uh, Nick Sparks. I'm a wedding photographer out of Denver, Colorado. I mainly shoot uh, weddings and it's my profession, but I also do a bunch of other work on the side. So if you see, oh, okay. If you see these prints uh, right behind me, those are some uh, photos I shot in Thailand there. So I'm a pretty active, I guess, like art photographer also. I'm thinking about, um, you know, coming out with some of that work later on, maybe um, I'll show this channel some of that work. But yeah, anyways, uh, I haven't been on camera in like five years. So <laughs> forgive me a little bit on um, any ums or uhs or, or whatever else. And uh, just so you guys know, this channel is totally switching format. I might have done some videos in the past where um, I took the time to set up a tripod or hired a videographer to follow me around. This is just... Uh, me talking, really, I just don't have the time for it right now. And I just want to do a couple of uh, videos here and there. So nothing uh, too serious. Um, one thing I will be doing is I will be disabling comments on this video. And I will have a link uh, down in the description, though, for you guys to submit questions. So um, anybody who's watching this who um, has a follow up question or wants to ask me about something totally different or um, it could literally be anything. Uh, just put like go to that link. It'll go to my wedding photography website and you can just uh, ask it right there. And yeah, I'll do another. Uh, I can do a screen share. I can do just a regular video. But yeah, this uh, video right here is all about the a7 III. So um, I've had this camera since uh, January of 2019. So I'm going on five years with it, which I never ever expected and uh, this channel used to be all about gear so it was all about buying the new gear reviewing the new gear and um, yeah and I just haven't had really any videos to shoot so I, I have this camera and I have uh, my second body which uh, houses my second lens on it and yeah I thought I would just kind of go over some stuff about this camera which may seem obvious to me but which um, may be new to you, or if you're just like looking for a long-term review, it could be interesting. So yeah, let's uh, go on to um, sort of the status of this camera in the current year of 2023, going into 2024. So the megapixels are plenty. So it's 24 megapixels, which I think is just a sweet spot. Cameras that uh, shoot higher megapixel counts, um, they'll kind of reveal blemishes more in photos um even if you have a softer lens on there and they do tend to look a little bit more digital so this is probably a little bit conflicting with some people who are watching this video on youtube it's very gear centric very kind of consumerist we all want the newest stuff but um looking at a file from a 24 megapixel full frame sensor at least to me looks right. Once we get over that, everything's becoming sh like almost too sharp, too real. So that's kind of my stance on the megapixels. And if you're wondering if this will be enough for your printing needs, um, I've done plenty of printing with it. So I have to get used to my sides here. So right up here, these are some 12 by 18s. Um, I like to keep the format um, kind of uh, the, the, the crop ratio, I should say. Uh, native to the resolution it was that can, actually came out of camera so 12 by 18 that's why they're uh they're you know in that kind of odd size there i've printed all the way up to 24 by 36 and those are like 150 dpi which is totally totally usable too so um unless you're shooting over uh 24 by 36 you're pretty much good to go on 24 megapixels unless you're just cropping like crazy um i do crop sometimes but um I still think that this this should be plenty. So um, even if you're cropping, I, I totally think you're good. People are just worrying too much about the megapixels. I think camera companies, they like to keep on increasing that over and over and over and having higher priced models that have, you know, 60 megapixels, 100 megapixels. Um, just to have something on the spec sheet that's different, that's, it's going to make it better, blah, blah, blah. So... I don't think it's necessary for most people. If you're a large format art photographer and you're printing like billboard size or you're filling up a, a whole wall. So, um, you know, maybe, you know, you do want to start looking into something like the, I think it's called the X2D by Hasselblad, which is a hundred megapixels. 
that sensor is also going to be a little bit bigger so you don't like it too much like crunch in there and the format is going to be closer to 8 by 10 too which is kind of like more um more more of like what you would typically be printing and you know artworks and stuff like 20 by 30s and whatnot it's not like a perfect ratio right there but i i mean i think if you're just you know worried about that you shouldn't get the full frame sensor with um with 60 megapixels you should get the uh the medium format size with more megapixels it just makes more sense and the low light performance will be better um yeah so <laughs> there's my big rant on uh, megapixels there and yeah on to iso so you know i haven't tried too many cameras in the last couple of years but um i do keep an eye on dxo so <laughs> Um, for for you, those of you unfamiliar with uh, DXO Mark, it's a website that has been up for God as long as I've been shooting. So I want to say it's been up since at least 2014. And you can go on there, and you can just see uh, they've been using the same scientific test or whatever uh, since 2014 at least longer, possibly. And uh, it just shows you um, exactly uh, how this camera will rank. Um, the A7 III. It's better than the a7 IV. It's better than all the other high bang pixel cameras that have come out. It's better than uh, than anything else, and it's um, it's right up there. There are some medium format sensors that do beat it in ISO on there, but yeah, this is totally good. Um, dynamic range is still great. So um, dynamic range in these uh, Sony sensors, which I think most camera manufacturers use now. Um, they're all uh, basically the same since 2018. This one has a really good uh, dynamic range and I haven't had any problems with it. I can boost my shadows. So uh, pre this, pre 2019, pre this camera, I shot mostly Canon, uh, Canon bodies like the 5D Mark III, 5D Mark II. And um, I did have to come up with some really creative ways or uh, explain to clients like, hey, we can't get this background right now, but uh, that has never been a problem with this camera. I can underexpose and uh, bring up the exposure in post, and I don't have to um, worry about like mountains or clouds being um, being kind of blown out there. So uh, dynamic range is great, and there's been no improvements there. So you know, hopefully in the future there will be improvements. Um, yeah, looking at my my notes over here, I did want to address um, why you might want to buy an a7 IV and um, please keep in mind that I'm no sort of expert here I haven't actually had like a hands-on with the a7 IV but uh, you may want to upgrade if you need better autofocus I personally have been super happy with this autofocus system so I don't feel like I need the better autofocus um, it's going to have a little boost in megapixels so if you uh, do want more megapixels, then you would buy the A7 IV. I think it's uh, 36 megapixels, so a little more there. Um, personally, I'm not a megapixel guy, so um, not a concern for me. And then uh, the ISO on DxO Mark is actually a little worse. So as soon as I saw that, um, I was a little bit disappointed. I was hoping for a nice low light performance uh, gain with that camera. And since it didn't have that, um, no dynamic range improvement no notable one anyway then um yeah this camera all the way from 2019 still works out great for me i've shot uh god hundreds and hundreds of weddings on it and it's been great you know um i shot 90 weddings and elopements last year on, on this setup and um it, it's gotten me through everything no major issues um about once every let's say uh, 200,000 images. Sometimes I, I've had one go all the way up to, uh, I think it was 350,000 before the shutter broke, but about every, you can expect every 200,000 images, um, a shutter will break on this camera. So then um, you can mail it off to Sony and uh, they'll go through this uh, expensive process of uh, fixing the shutter for you, but um, it could have other issues later on. Um, I actually sent one of my uh, A7 III's to be repaired and then it um, got back to me and then I used it. And I, I believe the repair was, God, um, I, I feel bad. I, I don't want to like call out Sony or whoever's doing the third party repairs for Sony, but I believe it was like 650, 700 bucks after all the like taxes and fees and, and all that to fix the shutter on it. And um, 
yeah, but anyways, I got it back and it was like two weeks later that I just had like another like random issue. So um, it, once another one breaks for me, I believe what I'll be doing is I'll probably just uh, sell the, the body for parts on a site like eBay or something. And then I will just purchase a, a brand new one. The brand new ones are very affordable nowadays. And yeah, I don't think it's it's really worth it. I would rather... So, so like once you pay for the $700 repair, um, you could have almost just sold this for maybe four or 500 bucks, a broken one, and then just paid the extra money to buy like a brand new a7 III. And yeah, I just hope Sony does not stop making this camera anytime soon because unless uh, something comes out that changes things significantly, I can see myself shooting on this for many more years. And uh, yeah, if there's anything else you guys want me to touch base on, just uh, fill out that, that link um, that I'll put in the description here. Again, there are no com comments open. Uh, on this channel, I just found that kind of uh, the gear community on U on YouTube can be a little bit overwhelming uh, for for me and probably a lot of people who are just kind of doing this for fun. So um, I would like to to connect though with some people on here and uh, do some videos every now and then. So yeah, just uh, again links down there and yeah, you can uh, check out my work at www.nicksparksweddings.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Nick Sparks Photography and I'm working on some uh, cool art right now, so you um, may hear something about that in the future. But other than that, I'm just a wedding photographer doing some uh, random videos on YouTube. So <laughs> until uh, next time, um, until I get some questions or uh, video requests, um, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> all right. All right. Peace.